Welcome everyone to Teach Me Senpai, a short video where we will try to explain some aspects of uh, anime and anime tropes. And in this case, we're going to talk about the magical girl genre or subgenre, aka Maho Shoujo. I think, uh, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, I think magical girls typically have kind of four elements to them. There's the young girl heroine, right? Typically an average sort of everyday um, next door neighbor kind of girl, usually kind of klutzy. Um, there's some magical animal sidekick. There's a transformation into the magical girl um, and you typically fights in some sort of magical zone, sphere, you know, space away from reality. So there's some kind of disconnection from reality while she fights um, to kind of separate everything out. Is there any, are there any major elements here I'm missing? No, I don't think so. The wand. They all have wands. The wand. Yes, exactly. Um, or wands. or a or some device. Nice. Some device. Yes. Because they, that yep. has gone from a compact to a wand mm -hmm. to a pulse rifle. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they have whoa, and there's the sun. Um, they have transformed elements of what the the magical device is as things have evolved. Yeah. Well, well that's nice. that's true. Wedding peach is is like actually a compact, um, mm -hmm. a lipstick, and a couple other items. I, I forget what they are. Mm -hmm. We got uh, Sailor Moon, who <clears> has a wand. And wand. Right. Yeah, Card Captor Sakura has a wand. Mm -hmm. uh, Magical Iska, yeah. I think she has a rifle? Okay. <laughs> I, I can't remember what her weapon of choice yeah. is, but Mommy from Madoka, okay, she yep. does have a rifle. That's mm -hmm. her it's true. magical device. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, and it's important, too, because of the merchandisability of the show. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think when we think magical girl, we think kind of something like this, right? Cute girl, lots of effects, that kind of stuff going on. Um, and I think it's, imp it's important to point out that like, on the one hand, magical girl is clearly this sort of um, kind of, you know, the girl equivalent of superhero, right? The kind of fem right. feminine, um, stereotypically feminine aspects transformed into somebody who actually has magical powers can do stuff. Um, and you get kind of a variety of different, different, different aspects of that. You get kind of the, um, you know, they could be ballerinas, they could be whatever. There's usually some theme involved in there. Um, but yeah, absolutely. There's, there's that kind of, kind of idea. Um, um, and then, um, getting back to it, I think you have the, um, the animal sidekick as the conduit to the magical powers as right. the character that can explain why everything is happening the way it is. Um, and then everything's kind of happening through that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like when the, the cat turns to you and turns to the girl and goes, no, you are not having a bad trip on the LSD. I am actually a talking cat. <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to explain to you why your world has just suddenly gone upside down. So exactly. let me explain. You yeah. are the uber blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Cube, for example, mm -hmm. explaining how wonderful it is to be a magical mm -hmm. girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, one of the things that I find interesting in Magical Girl, I think one of the reasons it has enduring um, appeal is because there is an aspect of character growth, typically, in Magical Girl, where the being a Magical Girl is something that allows the girl to kind of Think about herself and her her personality and her values and such and potentially grow as a result of that yeah. um and she's usually a little more mature at the end of the show than she was at the beginning still maybe klutzy but there's some amount of self-reflection ideally by the end of the show let's say i but correct me if i'm wrong but i think almost every magical girl has that point where it's a value decision mm -hmm. at some point what am i fighting for mm -hmm. who am i protecting Mm -hmm. Do I give it my all to, to protect the people and the things that I love? There's yeah. always that kind of point where it's, I'm kind of reluctant. This seems kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. And yeah. then there's that p pivot point of commitment mm -hmm. to the magical girl where they yeah. fully inhabit that persona and they drive themselves forward to mm -hmm. complete that, that dreamed of desired goal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And of course, a transformation sequence, you know, with lots of yes. special effects and glowy things. And, um, you know, glowy anime nudity, as is typical yes. in, in the thing. Um, and it should be pointed out, like, there is a certain amount of potential male gaze in some of the Magical Girl stuff because there is a uh, older male otaku audience for some of these things. So there can be a little <laughs> bit of that here and there. Yes. 
Um, although, but, although I my, my yeah. favorite is like when you go to a convention and you see mm -hmm. like a whole bunch of bearded guys dressing up as Sailor Moon. Walking <laughs> <out>. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, um, but you know, the vast majority of, me, uh, of these for the vast majority of time are are made for that sort of young girl audience and yeah. sort of that, that sort of girl empowerment thing. Um, should we point it out? A magical girl is not without its detractors. Um, a lot of feminists in Japan are not crazy about the fact that these girls um, always do this in this sort of very constrained magical reality. You know, superheroes get to actually fight criminals in the real world. Right. Magical girls generally are, are operating in this very sort of um, prescribed little field over there that no one ever, ever notices. So you could argue kind of back and forth as to the actual, you know, um, impact of magical girl, but still. Well, and I yeah. think we've, we, as we've discussed, Madoka and um, mm. Magical Girl Asuka, uh, the, the, there's mm. a lot of these things where they've tried to take some of the honey sweetness out of it mm -hmm. and make it a little more grounded where yeah. there are, e even though Madoka does have the sort of magical sphere, mm -hmm. the real world psychological impact is mm. increasingly addressed. Yeah. So that you have, right. um, you have the, the, total disconnect from reality and, and mm. to fight the fight and then come back to reality, you're now getting this crossover where there is an impact on the girl as she's making yeah. her progression. Exactly. So it's like, I could see where, you know, there would be that kind of commentary has led to some interesting developments and influences into how magical girls proceed forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a long cry from wedding peach where they the whole goal is, we want to make sure that every boy is with every girl and that they get married <laughs> yeah. in the end. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we, we've kind of moved mm -hmm. a little ways away from that. So. Yeah. And while Sally That's the Witch changed. did manage to help, you know, fight crime, adult Ooh. crime people, mm -hmm. it didn't have it didn't have a lot of psychological impact about sure. how they were confronting right. those adults and mm -hmm. what that means and sort of to her friends that watch her just create a house and furnishings out of yeah. nothing. It's like, shouldn't that scare yeah. the hell out of you? Or, <laughs> like, well, I was, I was just going to say the, the, the early days of magical girl, it was just, there was no point at which, you know, the magical girl goes, Oh wait, they're shooting at me. You know, and it's just kind of like, here's the bad guys bonk, you know, and there, <laughs> yeah, and exactly. it's, just, it's like, now it's like, Oh crap, they're shooting at me. They're really mm. shooting at me. Yeah. Magical girls now are more than willing to take a rail gun and fire it right back. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Half a city block blown up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure happens when you're fighting the bad guys. Oh. Well, and it's it's one of the things that has really evolved. Like uh one of the things that was noticeable about precure is the fact that the girls literally kick and punch their enemies. Like there's no simple right. magical wand glowy energy thing. Like it is literally a physical combat. Yeah. So we're definitely seeing a lot of changes. Which, you know, that makes you wonder, it's like, is it edged closer to more of the shonen kind of side? Mm -hmm. Because so, you yeah. now have a greater awareness that the male gaze that has been mm -hmm. drawn into this, you can fix that gaze if you mm -hmm. give a little bit more combat shonen -y, mm -hmm. that you can be like, oh, well, this isn't just fluff and, and magic wands and, and light sparkles. Mm -hmm. Now they're punching and kicking and getting into physical combat. I can, I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. I'll put Naruto well, there, to the side for is... a moment and I'm not going to watch them like <laughs> punch and kick each other. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well, there is, uh, I just reviewed a, um, a manga um, last week uh, called Shy. And that's what that is, is, mm -hmm. is um, you know, these are people with magical powers and she happens to be the Japanese one, which is totally magical girl mm -hmm. kind of thing going on. But she can fly, she has superhuman strength and she does punch and kick and and mm. physical contact physical kind of combat, thing going yeah. you know going on in addition to the oh in the end we must win with love and friendship mm. Pow, you know yeah. kind of thing yeah. going absolutely on. Feel I'll the tear off your arm and then Boom. shake your hand <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so yes magical girls can kick tail as well as save the world yes. which is pretty cool um yeah there we go